Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees podcast. So today I'm delighted to be joined by Cindy, Cindy McQuay. Did I pronounce that right, Cindy? The surname? Yes, you did. You can't mispronounce Cindy, but you can definitely mispronounce um, McQuay. Um, so uh, you, one of you, she, she's a fellow adoptee listeners, and, and I understand, you know, one of your big things is these, uh, the healing retreats that you that you run. Um, yes. And it's called uh, Hireth. I, Hireth. 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 Even and though that... I'm pronouncing it incorrectly also. Okay. Because well, it, 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 I don't have the Welsh twirl that it should be Hireth. It, oh, okay. you know, something with a little twirl. It sh- well, maybe. Did you know that I was born in Wales? I did not. No. Neither did I until I was 11. <laughs> I had to wow. get... But uh, I was adopted out of um, uh, an agency in in Liverpool, uh, which is fairly close to the the border with uh, with the English border with Wales. Um, but yeah, I, I, when I had to get my first um, uh, my first uh, passport, I needed my birth certificate, and it said it said Wrexham, and it not uh, not Liverpool. Wow. Yeah. So um, I, I didn't stay long. Obviously, I didn't stay long in uh, in in uh, in Wrexham. Um, so, what what comes to your mind, Cindy, when you hear this uh, the name of this podcast, Thriving Adoptees? What what comes to your mind? Um, a, a couple of things. Uh, the literal definition, as in, we we can be thriving adoptees. Yeah. Um. And then uh, how can we thrive? Yeah. You know, so learning, I guess, from others who are thriving, adapting, um, working through things. Yeah. I had a I had a very interesting email from somebody that I asked to come on the on the, the show um, because that person had uh, uh, had been a guest on another adoption adoptee show and i'm going to just going to read this out uh, because i think you might be interested in it so it says hi hi simon congratulations on your podcast i'm on a i'm on a con uh, i'm on a quest to heal myself but have found it a rough road i'm not exactly a thriving adoptee in inverted commas so probably would not be a good candidate for your podcast i was thriving at times of my life but i let I let my birth mum and a secondary rejection ruin all that. Uh, Mm. Anyway, I'm sure your email was a group message sent to many people, but I thought I would respond. I should give the podcast a listen sometime and not judge it for its name. I I tend to compare myself to other adoptees and feel alone and inverted commas, less than even in the adoptee community. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, that's sad. It is, isn't it? That that is. I mean, I I, I sent an email back saying thank you for your honesty, you know, because I, I I never realized the, the the subtitle for the podcast is healing inspiration and empowerment for for adoptees. So hmm. I, I, I saw it as a um an aspirational thing, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't see it as somebody would look at it and say, no, I don't. I I don't identify with that. Um, I I don't want to. I I don't want to learn. You know, your question was, uh, the the question that you you came to mind was, um, that came to your mind was, how can we thrive, and you know, what can we learn from others? Well, that's what I'm trying to do with the show. So this idea that, um, uh, yeah, that people would see that and mm-hmm. be put off by it. Um, and if he's on a quest to heal, why why wouldn't he why wouldn't he listen to like two minutes of the show before he sends an email back saying, "Yeah, exactly, exactly." Very, very interesting. Very mm. interesting. So um, you you said uh, you, you talked about learning from others. The so I, I guess that's what the retreats are about, right? That, that's uh, that's uh, the retreats are. A kind of a manifestation of that that they're a conclusion from the fact that we learn from others 
Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's that's one part of them. Um, I I personally think one of the biggest things is um, how we can heal within community. Um, being with people who get it. Uh, you know, these Zooms have been a lifesaver for many of us, but there is nothing like being face to face for real. Um, you know, being able to give someone a, a real hug. Yeah. Um, and I myself am shocked at how many adoptees have never been around other adoptees. I grew up around many. Yeah. And uh, I, I, that's the one thing I have found on the internet is how many have never ever spoken or met in person with another adoptee? It's that's sad. Yeah. I I remember uh, the first. No, I, there were there were a couple of lads, a couple of boys at my school who were adopted, but I never spoke to them um, about it. But I did go to a, a 21st birthday party for one of my friends and his girlfriend was there and somehow we got onto the subject that she was she was adopted. And there was uh, a, a, an instant an instant um, kind of empathy bond whatever there, yeah there there definitely is yeah um you know and then when you're when you're in an isolated group of just yourselves uh there's that uh safety feeling um you you know you know that you're you're safe with your emotions uh your what whatever um that that you're not going to be judged yeah so what would you say that has been most helpful for you in terms of learning from other people? Hmm. Learning from other people. Um, I would say uh, being open-minded um, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit further on that. Um, at the retreats, we offer um, seven or eight different sessions um, with uh, professionals. So I am a host. I am not facilitating at all. Um, and we, there are different sessions each retreat. So the retreats are never the same. And um, I have never been a writer at all. And writing therapy, we have found, is very healing or can be very healing for people. So the very first uh, retreat that we had a writing session you know I sat there with my arms folded you know and I was like nope not gonna do this not gonna do this but Cindy you gotta maintain professionalism here you know I don't want everybody else to be poo-pooing it and I realized you know a little bit into the session that oh wow I don't have to be a, a quote uh, author writer you know I can do which I love to do, my little um, memes or graphics. I can be a writer, you know, with with one or two sentences. <clears throat> so it's that sort of open mindedness um, that you can get something out of just about anything. So it's the willingness to listen and um, and and want to, uh, I guess take advantage somehow of whatever tools are being um, offered to you. Yeah. I, I often I hear other people talking about writing and I've, I've tried, um, I, I did, I did write a book, but it didn't have much about my adoption stuff. It was in about different stuff really uh, a few years ago. Um, and it did help me get stuff out there. I, and I, I found it uh, therapeutic to do that, to get stuff out there. So I think it's about how we get our stuff out there, how, how we get mm -hmm. our stuff out of our head and our hearts. So uh, coaching, therapy is, is about getting words out uh, and um, maybe having them challenged, right? Um, and uh, writing is the same same thing. It's about getting our words out there, which right. I think requires us to slow, slow down a little bit and see our own words. And mm -hmm. we can, we can actually, um, 
when our brains are going 10 million miles an hour, getting stuff down helps us slow down somehow and get stuff out and 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 see where we where we might be wrong, right? Um, right, but but in it terms also of openness, op openness, openness to being wrong. Right, but I also think it it gives you something to reflect and look back at. Um, you know, like if, if you're writing a, a few sentences within the moment, <clears throat> and come back two days later, and go, wow, why did I write that? You know, so it it. it it's a it's it's a tool that I think that a lot of people don't realize they don't have to be a professional writer that you can still use writing um, to your advantage. Yeah, I mean even I, art. Art, yeah, I, I mean, uh, same we, thing. We, yeah. And play therapy. There are yeah. so many, you know, things that that you can do that are helping you. Yeah. So I, I listened to the interview. Um, you were on uh, Beth Syverson's uh, podcast. Which, mm -hmm. She's a, a, a adoptive mum. If you've not come across her listeners, and it's the, her podcast is called Un, Un, Unraveling Adoption. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I heard you. Uh, you were talking about the drumming. You you enjoyed enjoyed the, the the drumming. So it's it's some sort of release. It's some sort of it's some sort of vent, isn't it? It's oh it's, yeah. It, that it, that drumming was amazing. Um, and again, that was uh, one of those things I had never um, been exposed to. And when she first started doing the drumming, uh, the, the facilitator around the room and, you know, we had our eyes closed and not everybody, myself included, had their eyes closed. We were peeking, you know, what's going on? Yeah. What is this? What is this voodoo stuff that's happening here? But oh my gosh, the the internal sensation that you sensation release whatever, the visceral feeling when it, when she gets near to you, it, it's unexplainable, absolutely unexplainable. I cannot at one of the retreats, one of the attendees was sobbing uncontrollably, and afterward, um, and it was her. I can't, it might might have been her first or second time coming. Um, anyhow, <clears throat> after she got control of herself, she said, "I have to call my therapist. I have never been able to cry. I cannot believe or, you know cry about what has been happening. Um, I cannot believe that just that drumming released it. It just it allowed her, you know, gave permission, whatever. So that drumming is is." Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, I had a. Have you come across uh, an adoptee called Emma Emma Stevens? Have you heard her? Name? Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. She will be facilitating for us um, uh, during the summer. Yes. Fantastic. So I did. Uh, I'm. I'm just listening to her second book um, at the moment, and I I interviewed her after listening to her first book, and a couple of things that she said really rung true for me um one of well both of them kind of relate to what you're saying uh and there was i think one of the words was um the the mystery of healing or the mystic nature of healing or mm, I like that. something something along those lines so like it, it is inexplicable to use to use your word and shrinks are very clever people i say this quite a lot because I, I, they are very clever people and they are like lawyers and they're, they're, they're like lawyers so if you ever watch uh we watch a lot of cop shows and obviously there's a lot of courtroom scenes sometimes in cop right. shows. and you hear you hear the um the the the, the lawyer for the um, prosecutor first, I think, and then the defence one. And listening to them both, I always think, well, they're both true, right? Because they're, they're able to judiciously pick the facts and wind this narrative together and get somebody to communicate it 
and and they're able to make their the, the facts that they show that they speak mm. um fit fit their case that's their art and it, it seems to me that shrinks talk a good game like that as well they're able to make make their stuff um uh, fit the art and it all that's sounds very logical so right. it, it, when somebody comes along and say well drumming changed my life we're like well yeah great for you but uh, that's not for me and we move on whereas it, it's far better to be as you say open-minded and and, mm -hmm. and find out what works for us and not be looking i think for the logic of it you know um uh, emma's book uh she, the, the 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 second book is called a fire is coming and it it's about how her um how her therapist seduces her and and and, and she's this therapist had done it before and you know therapist supposed to be a safe, a safe place you think well what they, they they've got professional qualifications they shouldn't be doing it. she'd been doing it she'd done it before she she mm. seduced and, and so the the natural the, the, well the, the the normal route that we would go down and these people sound very very um uh, plausible and stuff and yeah um it doesn't really matter how the healing happens um and and when it does happen it is kind of mysterious because it's it's something new isn't it healing I, well you know what what is healing what does healing well, it, do to you and I always say we're we're never really fully healed. Um, you know, and Aaron, my co-host, um, always says you can never have too many tools in your toolbox. She calls it her Mary Poppins toolbox yeah. bag. Uh, you know, and the more tools that you're exposed to, the more times you can reach in your little Mary Poppins bag to pull out that particular tool that you were you know that you were taught to use at certain yeah times mm. well i'm i'm fascinated by this healing stuff and the words around it so to me um the ideal the the, the ideal the idea the concept that i um wounded that we are wounded um is inherent in, in in the need to heal well what what's wounded hmm. what's wounded hmm, throwing me a curveball there yeah yeah i, I it's a big I, I i'm i'm fascinated i'm fascinated by it because you know, for example, Rebecca Autumn Sanson, she's been on, the, been on the podcast as well. And um, she said, uh, yeah, she, similar to this guy, actually, I read the email. She said, I, I said to her, what does healing adopter, you know, what does thriving adoptees mean to you? She said, well, I'm not sure whether I am one or not. I said, well, seems to be, you see, you're doing some great work. You've made this film with Nancy Verrier. Um, you, you're very active. You seem to be smiling. It's like, well, it, from the outside in she looks to be doing okay to me you know and and, and well and, and but her film is called reckoning with the primal wound mm -hmm. it, but, but by saying reckoning with the primal wound we're actually taking it we're taking it as a given that we're primarily wounded i, I like i had a i had a good um experience i heard you talking about your experience with with mm. with, with with beth i think you made a very interesting point about the um, just because the adoption is good doesn't mean that the relinquishment that the relinquishment that had that that preceded it um doesn't doesn't wound us but what what is wounded i would is is there a right or wrong answer for this well no it's all up for debate it's an opinion yeah it's an um, opinion i don't i would say for for me, I think the way I look at it is my um, identity is wounded. My um, um, and wounded can be a strong word. Um, you know, I don't know if I would tend to use 
hurt instead of wounded. Wounded sounds uh, not to not to diminish those who who may have a stronger wound feeling. Um, it, it could be our inner child. Um, it's definitely, I, I think, loss. Um, I guess I could keep picking up word, picking yeah, words yeah. out here. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I I'd encourage your listeners to 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 do this uh, to do these valves. Give it some give it, give it some thought about what it is that's actually wounded. Um, I, uh, I I've I, I'll link to my thoughts. I, I did a, a webinar on this subject back in the start of the year and in in summary i would say that i have definitely felt wounded um by by adoption i definitely felt wounded but what has that but but we're not our feelings right mm -mm. so no. we're the one that um is aware of our feelings and some people use the word consciousness as mm -hmm. as as a synonym, uh, as another word that means the same as identity. So some people, including myself, believe that consciousness can't be wounded. Hmm. Huh. So the the metaphor for this, um, this is a guy I name check all the time, uh, and I'll do it again because he's a genius. A guy called Rupert Spira, S P I R A. He 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 says that his metaphor is that of a a a, a screen playing a movie. So. Yeah. Consciousness, who we truly are, is the screen. And the movie is our experience of life. Including, oh, that's, yeah, including that's our deep. thoughts. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah. Uh, well, deep, deep is, deep, deep is good uh, for, for me anyway. I don't know. <laughs> you, you know, that we, uh, yeah, deep is where deep is where the good stuff is, uh, or deep is where I found the good stuff. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, and, and again, that's being open minded. Um, and deep doesn't have to be um, um, above your head, for lack of, of better words. Yeah. Because again, you can get something out of deep. Yeah. Uh, somebody told me. The pro a few years ago, the problem with you, Simon, is you're too deep. Uh, and um, it wasn't, it's not, adopt it's not an adoptee, it's got nothing to do with the option, the con conversation, nothing to do with adoption. Um, I couldn't, I was stunned when he said that. Um, I couldn't think of the, I couldn't think of the answer in, in the moment. Um, my, whatever, my amygdala shut down or whatever it calls. Um, I, I froze in that moment, but I, I came up with the perfect riposte the following morning, and obviously he wasn't there, and I, I haven't shared it with him yet. Which was, would you prefer to? Would you rather that I'm more shallow? Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, I, 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 love, love, having, our, having, I, I love having in depth, deep conversations. You, you know, reminds me of of my uh, my younger partaking days shall i say yeah um you know when you would have those really deep conversations and it's amazing when you let your mind just go um you know the stuff that that flows from your mouth or, or the thoughts that'll come into your head you yeah. know those aha moments yeah that's uh, some people call those a stream of consciousness. Have you heard that phrase used? A stream of mm. consciousness. Yeah, it's just like what goes on. 
Um, so yeah, the idea is with this screen, taking it a bit further, making it a little bit um, more easy to understand is the fact that the, the, the movie of our life is, you know, one minute it's, well, it starts with loss, as you say. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, then there's some happiness. Then there's a few, uh, maybe there's some romantic comedies. Then, then there's some nightmare. Then, then there's it's a, it, it's a horror movie. There's some real nightmares going on. It, the, the 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 movie of our life changes, and none of that uh, does any has any effect on the screen. So the screen doesn't laugh. Mm -hmm. the screen doesn't laugh at the comedy moments. The screen doesn't the, the screen doesn't poo its pants in the scary moments. The screen is un, unaffected and going closing the metaphor loop unwoundable. Because you know, people say that there's a part there's a part within us that is um is untouched. And I think when we look when we think of a, a, a literal physical wound. It's once and done, isn't it? You know, if I, mm. if I cut my hand, um, then I'll maybe run it under some water to wash away any muck. Then I'll put some antiseptic on, and then I'll put um, a Band-Aid on. Do you call, what do you call them? Band-Aids? Is that what you call mm -hmm. them? Band-Aids. Band-Aids, yeah. We call them plasters here in the UK. Oh, or Band-Aids. We put that on. Oh. Then, and then nature's going to do its work. Uh, it'll scab over, and that's it. It's, it's done. It doesn't it, – it, it, it's once and done. And um, that's, you know, the idea, if we take it to um, emotional hurt or, or, or trauma, trauma, some people will say, well, uh, you mentioned this, that we're, we're always healing. Um, but it doesn't, that doesn't, it's not a linear process, is it? No. No, it's, it's, it's and and yeah. it, again, I think it's where it's those aha moments. Like you may like heal from that wound where you cut your finger, um, and then you know you stub your toe. So then you know it's a whole different thing. But I, again, with those deep thoughts or whatever tool you've pulled out of your bag, you're then healing. From that, from that toe stub, that you know, yeah. whatever. Um, I don't. If if you listen to my podcast, you heard me say, uh, growing up, I had the typical stomach issues that a lot of us have. Um, mine was acknowledged um, by my adoptive parents, and acknowledged in that it could be related to that. Um, my parents were were very unique great, uh, supportive and acknowledging stuff. But anyhow, I, um, over the years have learned how to deal with that, learned how to, um, recognize what my body's doing, you know, so that's why I say healing. So I rarely have th those type of issues I had growing up anymore. Um, so, so do, you, do you know what I mean? That's like what, where you learn to heal from, from one thing, but then something else may come up. And so we got to figure out what to do with that thing now. Yeah. And they are home. See, I, I think healing, um, if we take away the kind of the, the, the medical or the physical, uh, use um uh, me metaphors is when we feel different when mm -hmm. we, you know and and we feel different when we have a change of heart so we can have a change of mind so change of mind is kind of fleeting isn't it oh uh i i thought i was going to do this and then i and then then i changed my mind and so it, it's quite trivial but when, when we have a change of heart 
when we feel different, that's that's more significant. So, you know, you've got aha moments, uh, are are a, a deeper change, a change of heart. Um, so, what what's healing? It's having a it, it, it's it's a, a change of mind, uh, a a change of heart, or a change of how we see ourselves. Um, and I was thinking, if I looked at those those models, so the physical healing um, is 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 once and done. Uh, the looking at it like emotionally, it it it's 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 never done. Is would be to look look in it that way. It, it's never done, um, and they seem to be really simple to me. So one of the things that I'm getting at the moment from this Rupert Spira guy is it's the, the big realization of, of seeing who we are mm -hmm. as, as unwoundable because you can't damage the screen and then forgetting it and then remembering it and then forgetting it and then remembering it. So, it's it, it's not once and done. It's not never done. It's like phase one, seeing it. Phase two, forgetting it. Phase three, remembering it. Right. And but our brains don't really like complex like that. We we want black and white, do we? We don't right, want right, right. We don't want the greys. <laughs> we don't want the greys. Right. Um, so yeah. The, one thing I can say, what I what I love and has been um, healing. Now you're going to make me question myself about using that word. <laughs> um, at the retreats, I cannot tell you how much joy it and and it it brings me to see the the joy on the attendees' faces being around you know, they're, they're people that, that, you know, sit, when I'm sitting back, just observing and, and they're just into each other and they've never met in person before. So, you know, but just seeing the joy on their faces, um, is, is so healing for me, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm bringing them together, you know, I'm bringing them home, so to speak. Um, you know, so again, with that healing word, like for me to say that's healing for me may, may not make sense, but it does. It gives me purpose. Do you know what I mean? So it, it, again, it's, it's recognizing how you can utilize your personality, your talents or whatever for your personal self um in your healing process yeah well it, it's it, it's like a it's an atmosphere it's an atmosphere thing isn't it so mm -hmm. I was talking to somebody a fellow adopter last week she was talking about um the, the body emitting photons and and like well we can't we can't obviously we can't see a photon can we um uh Unless we're watching Star Star Wars or the photo photon torpedoes or something like that, Adam. Um, but we can feel it. We can feel the energy of a room, mm -hmm. and we can feel whether it's a place that we want to be in or the place we want to run out of. You know, you can, you can go into a yeah. You can. There's a vibration that that the that the the, 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 uh, the room is. That, that's coming from the people in the room mm -hmm. and, and and you're part of that and you're picking up on that so i i think that's that's totally right i mean you like if you you know the difference between a a um a, a bad funeral and a good funeral right yeah yes you know, a, a bad funeral is 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 very different to a good funeral. A good funeral is a celebration of the life, but people All say right. celebration of the life, but as they're doing that, they're they're almost wrapping a rope around their neck, aren't they? And um, it, it's you know it's a, it's a celebration of his life, and it's very downy. Um, 
he, you know, or there's a celebration of his life. You know, it's this is it's not just it's not just what they say; it's the way they say. Correct. Um, so yeah, that's that's what's happening. You've got a, you're creating a healing space, and and you're giving. So I interviewed. Um, do you know? Uh, do you know Pamela? Para, Pamela Karanova. Come across. Yes. Um, the, the, there's a lot of work facilitating groups, doesn't she? Um, I interviewed her last week for the podcast, and she was talking about um, finding meaning. So, uh, her her mess has become her message. Yes, and, and that that's what I think. That's what you're talking about: finding a meaning, finding. Uh, a purpose so if we've been through this stuff and we find a purpose to it it the we can use that sh1t as manure to help other people grow that's that's kind of the idea and um there's um have you heard of a guy called robert diltz have you heard of him i don't think so he's got like um it's got like a, a hierarchy, like um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. He's he's got a, he's got a hierarchy of identity or something like that. Robert Diltz, D I L T Z, I think it is. Um, and right at the top is meaning. Um, and using the what's its name, um, using the Maslow's hierarchy, you know, we're talking about self actualization, I guess, as well. So what are some of the aha, mo aha moments you've had that have been most significant for you? And um, my biggest, which you'll hear me say all the time, is uh, how many adoptees have never met another adoptee in person? That, that blows my mind. Um, you know, because growing up, my older brother's adopted. I have cousins that... Are adopted um, neighbors who were adopted. We used to joke that there must have been something in the water in my neighborhood. Um, but so I was able to always talk about issues I may have been having with other adoptees. Um, so, so that that's probably the biggest thing that blows my mind. Um, so it normalizes it. Correct. And Correct. It's, and and it's not it's not it's out in the it's out in the sunlight. It's not in the not in the yeah. Dark. And I, you know, like I I also I had migraines. I I still get them occasionally. Knock on wood, though they're not the way they were younger. But uh, my parents also have two bio children. So again, my my amazing mother would had, would say to me, "I wonder if this." Uh, you know, if they run in your family, uh, because the young, my younger two do not get migraines. So again, it was out in the open. It was discussed. It was normalized. You hit the nail on the head. Um, let's see another uh, 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 ha, ha, uh, ha, ha moment. Um, I guess with the retreat, since we uh, combine all of the um, all of those within the community, the the NPEs and donor conceived and LDAs, um, is recognizing um, our intersections uh, and and how much we can be each other's um, allies. Um, even though I think it was there in the the forefront for me, I, I don't think I really. Um, I don't want researched is the wrong word. I don't think I really looked at it as as fully as I do now. Um, you know how much we do have overlaps, and and you know we we can be each other's allies. So, what have been the richest uh, intersections or, or overlaps with those different groups? The biggest. Um, I would say mm, the genealogical bewilderment, I think, um, you know, that we're all three of us, four of us are going to have that 
you know, you know, wondering about our, you know, our identity. Yeah. And what do you mean by identity? Because I know what I mean, but I think we probably mean different things. Um, like our family tree, where we come from. Yeah. I mean, it could be your personality identity as well. You know, where, where, where do you, uh, like I said, there was four kids growing up. All four of us are entirely different. Surely yeah. some of that came uh, as far as where my personality is uh, via nature, not nurture. Yeah. Um, and again, that was talked about when I was growing up. Yeah. Yeah. So wh what are the richest places for you for um, aha moments? I'm sorry? What are the richest places for you where where do you get your most uh, uh most um significant aha moments most rich where hmm i think when i'm reading yeah. um covid made me become a very avid reader yeah uh i was going through about four books a week um and i tended to read an adoptee book and then a, a for fun book and an adoptee book and a for fun book. And um, both, both types of books, uh, it, you know, it got me thinking. Um, also, you know, documentaries, you know, like recently I, I watched um, the Katrina Babies documentary. I was blown away at how similar it related to adoptees. You know, I'm talking about, um, uh, you know, the storm yeah. Katrina over here. Yeah. And so this documentary was, I don't know if you've seen it, if you haven't, it's, it's excellent. Um, so one of the kids that was in Katrina did this documentary, uh, HBO picked it up and nobody ever went back to check on the kids and i kept thinking oh my god nobody ever came back and checked on us you know we're adults now nobody ever came back and checked on us to ask us you know what adoption did to us so that's why uh, like i'll have these aha moments like i said here i'm just i'm gonna watch this katrina documentary and all of a sudden i'm like bam my head blows yeah. Wow, why has nobody ever come and checked on us? Yeah. Well, you do a lot of work in the advocacy space, so you can probably answer some of your own question there <laughs> on that, yeah, with the, the records. Oh, and... for sure. For sure. So um, is this is this something that is there a question that I've not asked or a, a topic that you'd like to explore before we wrap? I don't I don't think so. Um, I maybe would just add um, because I'm thinking about the email that you first read in the beginning that. Um, I think people in general and adoptees especially um, need to look at themselves and realize that they're they are thriving um, even if they don't realize it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, thriving doesn't mean never having a bad day. Right. Right. Um, if if we're out here's a we live in an emotive phobic word world the the world is scared of emotions we we i think we learn to be scared of emotions i think we learn that i think we learn that from the world around us so the example that always comes to my mind when i see that and when i hear that is you know i once saw this kid fall over in the shopping 
in the in the shop the shopping mall, and it, it was perfectly okay. Um, and then he 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 got up, he he got up, and he looked at his mum, and his his mum was worried, really worried about the fact that he'd fallen over, and he picked up on that, and and he started crying, right, because he is he, he mirrored his mum's um, emotions. I, I think I think we live in a world that's emotophobic. I think we're we're you know look at the 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 billions that are spent on trying to numb. Like everybody's trying to numb stuff and numb trauma, right? Whatever that background, adopted, non adopted. Look at numbing, um, booze, social media, TV, drugs, the whole thing. We're trying to we're trying to numb. We're trying to push push our pain push our pain away because we it, it gets so scary we think it's gonna engulf us and um, and it it doesn't it doesn't, no, mm -mm. It doesn't seem to that doesn't seem to happen no um yeah so thriving adoptees doesn't mean they're having a bad day it, you know and if, if we're okay with not feeling okay, we're always okay. Mm -hmm. Like trying to fight, trying to fight bad emotions. I, I, I've never, I've never won. Mm -mm. Never won that fight. No. It's always been no. that. Yeah. No, you know, it's everybody has self worth for sure. I saw a beautiful thing about the difference between uh, looking somebody looking at worth, the difference between self worth and net worth, and the fact that we in the Western world seem to get the two. For sure. <laughs> yeah, mixed up. So, um, as always, listeners, check out the show notes for links to um, Cindy's uh, socials and the website and. Um, We'll speak to you again very soon. Thanks a lot, Cindy. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. We'll speak to you again soon, listeners. Goodbye.